They were better known for fancy calculators and speak and spell. But there was a time when Texas Instruments made a home computer. The TI-994A is a curious beast. As far as I'm aware, it's TI's only venture into home computing. Possibly because it got its nose bloodied by a vicious price war with Commodore. Oof. But for me, the TI-99 has a peculiar attraction. To explain that, I'm going to have to tell you a story. I was but a child, and every afternoon I would walk home from school through my local town. As the nights grew darker in the winter, I was drawn to the brightly lit shops, back in a time when high streets had shops, not just bookies, Starbucks and tattoo parlours. One such shop was Rumbelow's. For anyone born after 1990 or from a foreign land, Rumbelow's was a chain of shops that sold and rented general household electricals, TVs, washing machines, VCRs and the like. Now that the computer age was upon us, Rumbelow's dedicated two or maybe three feet of shelf space to home computers. And there it was, the Texas Instruments TI-99. Even though I was in the UK and the market was dominated by Sinclair, Acorn and Commodore, Rumbelow's had this exotic machine and I was mesmerised. I loved the metal finish, the cutout for cartridges and the general vision of the future styling. I also clearly remember the game Parsec was always playing on it, and now here it is in my house. I genuinely feel like I've been reunited with an old friend after many years. A few things to note. I'm a bit wary of the power supply. It's quite old and has a US style plug but appears to work okay at the moment. The video output is component RGB, not the more common composite. But luckily my TV has all the right inputs. The joystick port looks like it should be Atari compatible, but apparently it's not so I have an adapter. The more observant amongst you might have spotted that I have the optional speech synthesizer module. We'll hear more from that later. Now this machine has a very interesting architecture. As TI were and still are one of the world's largest producers of semiconductors, it's not surprising that it used its own processor in the TI-99. But this CPU is 16-bit, and we're talking about late 70s, early 80s. Everyone else used 8-bit processors. So TI was ahead of the competition, right? Well, partly. 16-bit processors need 16-bit support chips to work at full speed, and that's expensive for the home computer market. So TI decided to use 8-bit logic to cut costs. The trouble is, that means twice as many operations per read or write, which wipes out much of the performance advantage. But enough about that, let's turn it on and see what's what. It has 16 color graphics and 256 by 192 resolution, with support for sprites from TI's own graphics controller, which isn't too bad at all for 1981. Okay. Let's do some super advanced basic programming and see how we get on. Basic programs run so slow, I can count quicker than that. That took about 19 seconds to count from 0 to 100, which is pretty poor. Compare that to an 8-bit VIC-20 from the same era. It takes less than three seconds. So why is BASIC so slow on this machine? Well again it comes down to cost cutting. A 16-bit program takes up twice the memory, so TI has an 8-bit runtime environment that translates 16-bit to 8-bit and back to reduce the use of costly memory in the 80s. That plus the 16-bit to 8-bit processor bus logic makes interpreted BASIC painfully slow. It's not the best implementation of BASIC either. Consider the humble but important if statement. Normally you can just write if some condition then do something. But in TI BASIC you have to do if some condition go to a line number huh? which is ugly and asking for coding errors. Huh? <laughs> really? Having said all this bad stuff about the TI-99's compromised architecture, it does work well with cartridges and it's clear that the system is designed very much with cartridge use in mind. 
So let's do some cartridges. I love the way it tells you its solid state, just in case you were worried about valves or cogs or something. I also love the Dallas, Texas bit on the box. That's really cool. So here we have TI Invaders, and this is Texas Instruments' own implementation of the 80 standard Space Invaders. The cartridges are nice and solid and fit into place firmly, leaving a nice space for a drink or ashtray to the right of the keyboard. And there it is, we're up and running in seconds. You can however see that the picture quality isn't great. We've got lots of vertical lines and the background is much more blue than black. So I'm going to use my open source scan converter box to see if I can get the picture a bit better. And this is a settings file I prepared earlier which gives a much crisper picture with better contrast. And here we have a very good version of Space Invaders doing all the stuff you'd expect and doing it well. The sound and graphics are pretty good, although I am picking up some noise on audio. The game does have some nice extra touches. For example, when you get killed, your damaged gunship is taken underground and replaced with a new one. And when you lose your last gunship, the invaders have a little party just to take the piss. It wasn't just TI that made cartridges for the 99. AtariSoft had its range of licensed arcade games available, including the Williams Arcade hit Defender. And that gives us a chance for a cheeky like for like comparison with the VIC-20 version. The sprites on the TI version are a bit flat because they're only using one colour. The VIC-20 sprites look more like the arcade game because they have multiple colours at pixel pair level. But the VIC game seems much jerkier to me, and the TI sound is really good. Next we have Super Demon Attack in the later style red plastic box. Straight away I love the name. It tells you there's going to be demons, their attack, and the whole experience is just super. What's not so super is the opening music, which is horrible. It sounds like something is broken in a church organ. Make it stop! I quite like the game though. The background is a nice effect and not very common to see in the early 80s. The demons are imaginatively designed and become more frantic as you go up through the levels. You get the idea. Moonmine is quite interesting. I've not quite got my head around it yet. Perhaps if I had a manual for it that would help. It has a 3D play area which scrolls towards you, with four blasters around the edge, a horizontal and a vertical pair which takes some practice to control. I guess I'm travelling through the tunnel of a mine. You shoot at aliens entering the area in front of you and collect objects to maintain your vessel. Or not. Continue game, Captain. Protecting a known object. This game uses the speech synthesizer, if you have one. Buck Rogers' Planet of Doom is a Sega game from 1983 with a colourful rotating 3D landscape that you fly over. Avoid electron from Spark. 
first step is to fly through some futuristic pylon gate things, avoiding the pylons themselves. Once you've completed that part, you need to destroy some bouncing alien tripod death robots. If you manage that, then you fly off for a battle in space with the alien guards to complete the level. And now to Parsec, the game I remember from the shop all those years ago. In the instructions there's this handy scoring system spreadsheet. Wow. I suggest you memorise it before you play so you can make good combat choices. Uh -huh. The sound is really good for the time, especially with the voice effects. It's not much more than a horizontal shoot em up, but I still like the simple cartoon graphics. Alert! Ships attacking! Alert! Ships attacking! Enemy destroyed! One criticism I do have is that sometimes the collision detection seems a bit off, especially when I think I've shot something. Funny that. The TI-99 was ahead of its time, and that's the problem. A solidly built 16-bit computer entering a market only ready to pay 8-bit money, so it's terribly compromised. They try to control the costs and even make cheaper versions, but ultimately the home computer market wanted cheap and cheerful, and this computer could have been so much more. It's a real shame.